Good afternoon, parents, guests, colleagues, and friends. We're delighted that you have been able to join us this afternoon to celebrate God's faithfulness in the lives of our graduates. Before we begin, let me invite you and encourage you to make sure that your electronic devices are off, or at least on mute. And uh, in a moment, the graduates will enter the, uh, the chapel and take their places on the platform. Uh, please take your seats, remain seated during the uh, processional. Uh, once the uh, platform guests have arrived, including our graduates, uh, we will pause the program briefly for a moment so that you can take pictures of the graduating class. Uh, they'll remain uh, standing for you and then uh, we'll be seated. But in the meantime, take your uh, pictures as you please. We trust that you'll enjoy this uh, afternoon of celebration together and celebrating God's faithfulness in the lives of these graduates. Thank you.
You may be seated. Well, let me welcome you to our campus. We are delighted to have you join us for this celebration this afternoon. Uh, we have a number of special guests here with us we want to introduce uh, to you, and uh, we're pleased to have them included uh, in our day today. Uh, board members Howard Weens and Ian Lawson, uh, Brandy Magnus, uh, President Emeritus Dr. Paul Magnus and his wife Jane, uh, Kristen Craig, Academic Chair for the Business Diploma at Saskatchewan Polytechnic. Welcome, Kristen. Uh, Mayor City of Moose Jaw, His Worship Fraser Tolmey. Mayor Village of Cairnport, His Worship Daniel Buck and his wife, Lori. Uh, MLA North Jaw, uh, sorry, Moose Jaw North, uh, Warren Mickelson, uh, Member of Parliament, Moose Jaw Lake Centre, Lanigan, Tom Lukwiski. Uh, Member of Parliament, Cypress Hills Grasslands, David Anderson. David was our grad speaker last year. Welcome, David. And of course, the class of 1959 and the class of 1969 who are here for their 60th and 50th uh, anniversaries of their graduation, respectively, so we're glad to have them uh, here with us as well. Along with the Canadian and provincial flags we are displaying today, uh, the Treaty 4 flag representing the Treaty of 1874 uh, between the Cree, Sauté, First Nations and Queen Victoria, that is also on display. And, and we do this to remind ourselves that we are all a treaty people and we want to support and affirm our Indigenous students who study and live in this community. And as we begin this celebration, please rise for the singing of O Canada, which will be followed by Dr. Chance Paul reading God's word and Dr. Matthew Zanting uh, leading us in prayer. And gentlemen, as a sign of respect, I would like to invite you to remove your caps and leave them off until the presentation of the graduates. And so let's uh, face the flag as we sing. Scripture reading today is taken from uh, the fifth chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, verses 13 to 16. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has become tasteless, how can it be made salty again? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor does anyone light a lamp and set it under a bushel. Uh, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. I invite you to bow your heads with me in prayer. Creator God of the universe, Lord of all there was, is, and is to come, we thank you that even though you hold all of us, indeed all of your creation in your hands, you still care about each and every person in this chapel. You know the number of hairs on our heads, and we thank you that you know the plans you have for us, plans to prosper us and not harm us, plans to give us hope and a future. 
Although our hearts are heavy as we anticipate remembering your death on the cross on Good Friday, we gather before you this afternoon to celebrate with these graduands, their families, and their friends. We celebrate the completion of one stage of their journey. You know the long hours, hard work, and toil that each of these students has endured to reach this stage. And we rejoice with them that we can now say, well done, good and faithful servant. Lord, I thank you for each of these students, for their presence here at Briarcrest, for the numerous ways they have grown as citizens of your kingdom, whether intellectually, spiritually, or emotionally, but also for the ways that they have given themselves to this place, whether as volunteers, leaders, athletes, or any number of roles here, building a community that glows with the presence of your kingdom. Lord, I also thank you for the family and friends who have gathered here to celebrate, for the roles that they have played as well in helping each of these students reach this stage. And as each of these women and men look forward to the coming days, I pray that your hand will rest on their hearts, that they might feel your calling to enter into the world, to serve you in all that they do, whether that is in their work, their family life, or their larger community. Lord, may your plan be clear to each of them that they might leave here feeling equipped and ready for the next stage of their journey. All these things we ask in your holy name. Amen. You may be seated. We seize this moment to honor individuals who have lived out our mission, people who exemplify important aspects of what we value as a learning community. And this year, we want to honor Ken Ginter. And I'm going to ask Ken if you'd come up here and join me for a few moments here as I introduce you uh, to this uh, congregation, this body today, many of whom uh, know you and many of whom you even taught. As a student at Cairnport High School, Ken Ginter chose a verse for his life. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart, Psalm 37, verse 4. Ken's delight in his family, in his work, and in his Lord has been on display at Briarcrest for over 46 years. After graduating from Cairnport High School, Ken completed three years at Briarcrest Bible Institute before earning his undergraduate degree in history from the University of Saskatchewan. Although he never expected to return to Briarcrest when President Henry Budd offered him the position of athletic director in 1972, Ken and his wife Judy accepted. Except for the the years spent at Wilfrid Laurier University where Ken received his master's degree in ancient Near Eastern studies, the Ginters have lived in Cairnport. Among, among many other roles, Ken has served as athletic director, high school art teacher, longtime football coach, and beloved professor of history and Old Testament at Briarcrest. Briarcrest is grateful to Ken for his steadfast service to the institution and for his decades of Bible teaching and for joyfully leading students through the scriptures. In particular, Ken's renowned courses in prophets and Bible, in Bible synthesis have deeply shaped the mul multitudes of college graduates. And again, many of you have studied under Ken Ginter and are grateful. Briarcrest College and Seminary is pleased to present Ken Ginter as a worthy candidate to receive the degree Doctor of Humane Letters Honoris Causa in recognition of his devotion to teaching the scriptures and for serving and caring deeply for the students that he has taught. Ken?
I would like to invite Ian Lawson to come up at this time and join me. Come here, brother. Ian recently retired from the Evangelical Free Church in Lethbridge after 20 years of ministry. And prior to that, he served in the classroom and in leadership here at Briarcrest for 13 years. He's an alumnus of Briarcrest, the University of Alberta, and Trinity Evangelical Divinity School. And Ian is also currently serving in the Board of Compassion Canada, as well as on our own board here at Briarcrest College and Seminary. He is the father of five grown children and the grandfather of 14 children, and will be speaking to our graduates today. Now, as I have known Ian for some 30 years, uh, Ian is a pastor's pastor. He is a leader's leader. And if I were to think of one word that would, uh, would package my impression of Ian, uh, it would be hard to do so, but I would say wisdom. And so often we'll be in, in leadership settings or convert conversations are taking place and, and Ian has this incredible ability to just synthesize all that's being uh, said and digest it into something succinct and clear and something that embodies wisdom and we're grateful for you. Uh, graduates and guests, please listen with expectancy as Ian speaks to us all. Thank you uh, very much. It's a delight to be here and so President Powelke uh, former President Magnus and uh, Chairman Weens and Board of Directors, members of the faculty, parents, and especially graduates. God bless you today. I'm deeply honored and privileged to be here on this special occasion and to bring these remarks. Uh, it's an honor for me to be here because this institution, uh, this ministry, this school, and this community has meant so much to me and to my family over the years. Um, my, I have an aim here today, and it is very, it's, one of my aims is to be brief, because I've sat through many convocations, both as a student and as a faculty member, and as a parent, and uh, so I realize that there's lots on the program, and my objective is to be brief and to the point. But what I want to talk to you graduates about today is your goal, your target and aim in life. Your aim is summed up in one verse. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15. And you know this verse well. The New International Version puts it this way. Do your best, do your best, your utmost, to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. God is saying to you today, be diligent. Make it your aim, make it your target, your goal. Aristotle was the one who said, like archers, we are more likely to hit the target if we can see it. And so what I want to do in these few minutes that we have together is to try to articulate for you what that target is, so that as you see the target, you can aim your life towards that. The target that I want to share with you today is a, like a triangle. Usually we think of targets as circular. But this is a three-sided triangle uh, bordered by three questions. And these three questions you can ask yourself at the end of a day, the end of a year, or in some of the rest of our experiences, the end of our life, and look back and to check ourselves against these three. The first question to ask ourselves is this, is the Lord well pleased? Is the Lord well pleased? Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved. You see, it's possible to be for, for us to be successful with people, but to be a failure with God. It's possible to be so enamored by what other people say that we forget what God has said. Now, I believe that God is more interested in who you are than in what you do. He's more interested in who you are as a person than what you accomplish in your life. God calls you not to be flattered, but to be faithful. Not to be the thermometer that picks up the temperature in the atmosphere of a room, but to be the thermostat that establishes it. You know, there's lots of money spent these days on, on heart improvements, millions of dollars on healthy hearts, but God is far more interested in a heart of integrity than a heart that is healthy. My advice to you, based on 
my experience over the years is to be very careful that you don't believe your own press reports. That's easy to do. Remember, it is God who's the one who will give final approval. God is the one who will say at the end, well done, good and faithful servant. And that is your goal. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved. That's the first question. And it's marked by a passion for a person, for Christ. God incarnate, who came into our world and has changed everything for us. There's a second question that comes out of that verse. And that question is, is the work well done? Is the work well done? The middle section of the verse goes this way. Do your best to be a worker who does not need to be ashamed. Is the work well done? This is a passion for excellence. Not for perfection, but for excellence. It says, make it your aim that you not be ashamed. Why would we be ashamed, possibly? Well, I can think of several reasons, but without taking too much time, we can be ashamed by aiming too low, by not living up to the gifts and the abilities that God has given to us, by living with this notion that anything is good enough for God, living and working without standards. That would be aiming too low. Or we may be ashamed if it costs us too little. A service that is done without much sacrifice. A service that counts. A service that costs. Graduates, my encouragement to you is to be known as a hard worker. May that be the moniker of your life that the Lord is well pleased and that you know how to work hard. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed. And the last line, you know, a worker, do you pre present yourself as one who correctly handles, manages the word of truth? And so the third question, is the word well used? Is the word used? Does it mark our life, our goals, our objectives, our dreams? Do we measure ourselves against this holy word that we've been studying, that God has given to us? The challenge facing us today is that God has spoken, as Howard Hendricks says, and he hasn't stuttered. It's clear, 66 books he's given to us within this, this scripture. Ours is a generation in which everything nailed down is coming loose. Things that we once said were impossible have now become possible and are happening. And so students, graduates, it's incumbent upon you and us together to know the word. As graduates of this institution, of, as ministers of the gospel, as disciples of Christ, that we know the word and that we use the word, that this word be our north star, our guide and our direction. It's needed as much today as ever, and you have invested time and energy and money in studying it here. May that continue to be your goal. It's needed today as much as ever. People want to hear from God. Whatever role God leads you to, let the word be your passion whether it's in the public square or in vocational ministry, use the word. Let it direct and motivate and so, and so influence us. Whether it be farming or teaching or policing or uh, photography or, or social work, those are all things that my kids are involved in just now, so they're close to me. Uh, may those be, may that still be your guide, the word of God and his infallible teaching. With, if it's vocational ministry, and some of you are headed to vocational ministry, let the word be your guide, not your own ideas. Preach the word, as Paul says in Timothy, not your own ideas. We live in an age of the internet where we're long on information, but short on transformation. And so graduates, you are trained, you're equipped, and prepared to communicate truth, God's truth his eternal, unchanging word. Howard Hendricks is the one 
that I heard say, there are three great days in a person's life. First, the day he was born. Second, the day that they were born again. And thirdly, the day that they know why they were born and born again. And graduates, today as you move from this chapter of your life into the next, may this goal, this target, dominate your life and your ministry. I leave you these three questions, and I trust at the end of the day, at the end of your life, you'll be able to answer in the affirmative. Is the Lord well pleased? Is the Lord well pleased? Is the work well done? Is the word well used? Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved. Do yourself to present your God, to yourself to God as a worker who does not need to be ashamed. Do your best to present yourself to God as one who correctly handles the word of truth. May God bless you, each one. Thank you, Ian. Even as our graduates spread out into Canada and the world in service to our Lord, we continue to seek out new students who will be equipped to serve the church and her mission and to engage our world. And today, uh, you're here celebrating someone's graduation. And if you'd like to participate in supporting future students uh, so they can reach this point as well, we would welcome that. So at this time, we are going to be receiving an offering. But let me just say something uh, from a personal note about how my wife and I approach our giving. We support our local church because we love the church and we love the mission of the church. And then, like you, we have friends and people we've uh, become, relation, um, become friends with over the years. We've come alongside and supported them. And then again, like you, we support crises and, and relief initiatives around the world. But we've also always been committed to investing in our strategic initiatives that build into the future. And so we support the work of Briarcrest College and Seminary. We believe in its strategic contribution into leading us into the future. And so we would like to afford that opportunity to you at this time to support the work of Christian education here in Saskatchewan and really in ways that touch the entire world. To be sure, we invite you to participate in today's offering joyfully and as the Lord directs, but certainly without a sense of obligation. May the Lord be pleased this day knowing that we are sending an exceptional group of women and men equipped with character, competence, imagination, and a commitment to lay down their lives in service in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So please join me now in prayer, and after a few moments, the usher will collect an offering. Our Father in heaven, we live in an extraordinarily prosperous province, and every blessing we have from you is given out of grace, and for this we say thank you. And Father, you call us to be stewards of that responsibility, stewards of those resources, and we pray that you would grant us wisdom as we seek to steward those resources well, and grant that we would also do so generously. And so now take uh, this offering and use it for your kingdom purposes today and beyond. For this we pray in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen.
Uh, this afternoon, I am delighted to introduce you to Riley Weeb, the college valedictorian for the 2019 graduating class. And as Riley comes to the podium, let me tell you just a little bit about her. Riley came to Briarcrest as a student athlete and played two years on the varsity volleyball team. She's also given herself to the community in her time here, serving as an RA on Whitaker Three, assisting with various events in her TESOL program, and enthusiastically participating in student life. I'm pretty sure that during her first year with us, Riley would never have imagined that she'd be standing here today. But as she herself would testify, the Lord has been faithful to her throughout her time here, and she has responded faithfully to the variety of ways in which he has called her to grow and serve. Riley has demonstrated herself to be a respected and valuable member of our college community and a gifted and diligent student who graduates today with a cumulative GPA of 3.98. So Riley, it's with great pleasure on behalf of Briarcrest College that I present you with the honor of college valedictorian and I welcome you to come and share your address with us. Congratulations you. to you and your class. Thank you very much. Hi everyone, uh, welcome here, family, friends, honored guests, and our graduates, soon to be, of 2019. Thank you all so much for joining us today. This is a bit of a strange day for us grads. Many of us have been anticipating this day for years, but feeling like it would never actually get here. The whole experience feels surreal. I think back on the start of my experience at Briarcrest, which would have been similar to many of yours, it started by walking through those doors out there four or five years ago, naively thinking, I'll just be here for one year. It didn't really work for me and clearly not for you either. So <laughs> many of us never thought we'd stick around long enough to graduate, but here we are. I think it's safe to say that all of us have grown significantly during our time at Briarcrest. We can show some portion control in the dining hall now. Uh, we've learned to format a paper any way you'd like it, still with the help of a format guide. Um, and some of us can even flip open to Habakkuk on the first try. <laughs> We've grown spiritually through chapel, dorm life, events like surrender, and interactions with mentors and close friends. We've grown intellectually in our classes thanks to our incredible professors. Many of us have even grown physically. <laughs> And I know I speak for all of us when I say that Briarcrest has played a truly transformational role in our lives. It shaped us into who we are now and prepared us for what is to come. This whole growing experience has brought with it a strange tension. The tension between desperately wanting to reach the finish line and yet never, ever wanting these wonderful college years to come to an end. And while all of the other areas of growth that I mentioned earlier are certainly significant, this tension is what I know caused the most significant growth for me. The reason being, I believe that both of those components, wanting to reach the end and never actually wanting the end to come, bring to light our eternal hope in Jesus Christ. On the one hand, when assignments are piling up, the end of the semester is near and there just don't seem to be enough hours left to finish all the work that needs to be done, we've learned to not get too caught up in the stress and worry of our schoolwork but rather to recognize its relative insignificance in the scope of eternity. We've learned that we live for something far greater than just this short season of study. We live with the eternal hope found in following Jesus, and it is this hope that allows us to live in joy and peace despite life's stresses. Similarly, the desire for college life to never come to an end sparks that same recognition of our eternal hope. This has been a huge thing that I've been learning over the past few years. I personally am a super nostalgic person, so ends of seasons such as this one tend to be very tough and tear-filled. These years at Briarcrest have held so many fond memories for each of us, and for many of us, it will be very hard to let go of this wonderful place. However, these years of college bliss do, and actually should, come to an end. But thanks be to God, we have an eternal hope far greater than the joys of college life. And unlike our college years, it will never spoil, never fade, and never pass away. In 1 Peter 1, it's described this way. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
It is by his great mercy that we have been born again, because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Now we live with great hope, and we have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. As humans, I think it's totally natural for us to crave stability and resist change, especially during seasons like this when we're surrounded by friends, fellow believers, and fun opportunities. The truth is, though, everything and every season on earth will change, decay, and pass away. One of the greatest lessons that I have learned during my time at Briarcrest is exactly this. Whether we just want all of the assignments to end or whether we never want the college life to end, it's going to end. Either way, and either way, we have this same hope to cling to. We can live with this great expectation that Peter writes about because of our priceless, heavenly inheritance that is beyond the reach of change and decay. What a joyous reality for us as followers of Christ that brings with it a challenge, a challenge to live our lives in accordance with this hope. Now, before I conclude, I would like to thank those who have journeyed with each of us over these past few years. Professors, RDs, chaplains, parents, family members, coaches, friends, and pastors, there are so many people who have enabled and enriched our experiences here at Briarcrest, and we are sincerely grateful for the roles that you have played in our lives. Finally, allow me to close by reading the words of 1 Peter 1, verses 3 to 4 once more. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by his great mercy that we have been born again because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Now we live with great hope, and we have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. This is the word of the Lord.
this time, I would like to introduce our seminary valedictorian. The seminary valedictorian is chosen by the seminary faculty and approved by the general faculty uh, every year. We select a seminary valedictorian on the basis of academic achievement, spiritual maturity, and how well this person represents our graduating class. This year, it's my pleasure to introduce Reverend Graham English as our seminary valedictorian. When Graham began his seminary studies, he was already a seasoned leader, having pastored for several years. But this did not stop him from wanting to continue to grow as a leader and as a learner. Besides his academic success with us over the past few years, Graham's seminary journey has been marked by leadership resilience. Little did Graham know that when he enrolled in seminary, he would soon be required to lead his congregation through a challenging season of change, change that began with the loss of their church building. Despite the intensity of this situation and the ensuing demands upon his leadership, Graham successfully completed his Master of Arts in Leadership and Management and, in the process, met some serious and challenging ministry um, situations. Con congratulations, Graham, for your outstanding achievement. Thank you. And uh, I welcome you to come now and uh, address our graduating class. Well, good afternoon, fellow graduates and family members and friends, honored guests. I'm deeply humbled and I'm grateful to have the opportunity to speak to you here today at this, uh, as the valedictorian. First of all, I want to say thank you to the faculty of Briarcrest for your investment in those of us who are graduating, your love for the Lord Jesus Christ and your commitment to teaching and your commitment to your students have just been outstanding. I also want to say congratulations to our fellow graduates. You have committed yourselves to a process that has caused you to grow for the purpose of becoming even more equipped and shaped for the unique mission that God has called each one of you to. So congratulations on completing this learning journey. As I thought about the opportunity to give this address, my mind was drawn to a word that I learned when I walked an 800-kilometer pilgrimage called the Camino de Santiago in northern Spain. In May and June of 2017, my wife Wendy and I trekked the Camino in 34 walking days along with four Sabbath rest days. Doing an average of 25 kilometers a day, we walked over mountain ranges and across flat prairies and through small towns and bustling cities. We walked on rainy days and on days when the temperature soared to 45 degrees Celsius. We walked when we were sick and tired and full of pain. There's an ancient word on the Camino and it's the word altria, which means go beyond. It's a word that's reserved for those times when someone wants to quit because they can't go on anymore. Their feet might be blistered, their knees are probably aching, their bodies are failing, they could have heat stroke. They're sick and tired of sleeping in rooms with 20 snoring pilgrims every night. Altria is used in those moments when a pilgrim wants to quit, and it's a word that is to evoke them to persevere, to dig deep. It's a word that I needed then when I was walking. It's a word that I've needed since. And it's a word that I believe that we need as we step into the challenge of leadership. For various reasons, I had just been slowly chipping away at a master's degree for a long time, and then I suddenly discovered Dr. Paul Magnus, and that changed my life. I registered for the Malm in the, for in the fall of 2016, and in December of that year, our church burned down in what was deemed to be an arson caused by a boy in our church. So as lead pastor, I had to navigate through legal and financial and pastoral, and then other leadership complexities that I've never ever faced before. On top of that, I had to relocate a church of a thousand people with a Sunday attendance of about 500 to a new location in a different community. 
At the same time, we began a plan to rebuild in a different spot. It seemed that what I was facing was well beyond my ability and my capacity, and I spoke to my wife and my board, and I offered to put the program on hold. And both sources of wisdom said to me in that moment, Altria, go beyond where you've ever been before. I'm sure that those of us who are graduating have had moments like that where we've wanted to quit on our learning journey, those moments when we needed someone else to say to us, go beyond. Those times when life press, presses in, when writing something fresh might evade you, when deadlines need to be met, when papers are piling up, and then all of the other challenges that life can throw you. It was in those times that we all needed someone to say, go beyond. And I'm glad that I pressed on, which begs the question, what does an old guy like me need to learn anyway? I think you were all thinking that. I've been in church leadership for a long time, but this learning journey changed the way that I lead, and I needed to change. I learned to pull people forward, toward a shared, co-shaped vision. Rather than trying to convince them of a vision that God had given me, I was able to engage them in creating and owning the future together. This was a game changer for us. And ultimately, because others encouraged me to go beyond, I've been able to lead our church through the chaos so that today we're clearer about our vision and have grown stronger in our unity. The learning journey that I wanted to quit on was in fact the very thing that God used to transform my leadership at a very critical moment for a faith community that I deeply love. There will be times when Christian leaders will face what seem like insurmountable challenges. We are in a time when the winds and the waves of change in our society are threatening to pull us under. It feels to me at times like the ground that I'm standing on is shifting beneath me. It seems that everything that I thought was solid is crumbling around me. Values and morals and worldviews have shifted radically, and that's just in the church. Leading in this new environment presents leadership complexities and weight like we have never seen before. And it would be easy for us to quit now, but now is the time to dig deep and to go beyond where we have ever been before in our leadership. It's time for us to take what we've learned and to apply it in ever-increasing and expanding ways with great hope so that those who don't yet know the love of Jesus can come to know him in every place that we live and lead. To do that in this culture at this time means that we need leaders who will dig deep and go beyond. As I close, I just want to share a verse from Hebrews. The author of Hebrews writes to a group of dispirited people who are tempted to quit. These struggling, persecuted Christians want to resign because the going is excruciating. So the author writes, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let's run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame. He sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. So the main point of Hebrews 12, 1 to 3, is to run the race marked out for us with endurance because our leader Jesus ran this race with endurance and he finished the work and then received his reward by sitting down at the right hand of God the Father. His persevering and suffering was for us. Some of us will get knocked down. Some of us might get tripped up. Some of us will make foolish decisions. Some of us will get attacked and accused. At times we'll feel depressed. At times we'll lose heart. At times we will be overwhelmed with the complexity and weight of leadership. And God's word to us is go beyond. 
Forgive those who have wronged us. Throw off what entangles us. Keep learning and growing and expanding. Forget what lies behind and go beyond for the high prize of God that's in Christ Jesus. Let's go beyond. Let's finish every assignment in life that we receive from this day forward, not, not just limping to the finish line, but with a kick that is filled with joy and hope because of the pattern laid down for us by Jesus in the strength that he provides for the glory of God. May God grant us this grace. It is my privilege to introduce four students who have distinguished themselves through outstanding academic achievement. Every year, the top 7% of Briarcrest College's four-year graduates are inducted into the Association for Biblical Higher Education's Honor Society. As I introduce this year's inductees, I ask that each of them stand and remain standing so we can uh, congratulate them together. Riley Weeb, Bachelor of Arts, Applied Linguistics, TESOL. Karis Fawcett, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology. Taylor Reimer, Bachelor of Arts, Applied Linguistics, TESOL. Heather Redant, Bachelor of Arts, Applied Linguistics, TESOL, after degree. Please join me in congratulating these students. can sit down. <laughs> Academic Achievement Awards are presented to the graduating student with the highest cumulative grade point average in each Bachelor of Arts degree program at Briarcrest College and Seminary. Students who receive the Academic Achievement Award must have a minimum GPA of 3.3 or higher. As I introduce this year's recipients, I ask that each of them stand and remain standing. Once all recipi recipients have a been acknowledged, please join me in congratulating them on their hard work. Riley Weeb, Bachelor of Arts, Applied Linguistics, TESOL. Heather Redant, Bachelor of Arts, Applied Linguistics, TESOL after degree. Nathaniel Heron, Bachelor of Arts, Business Administration. Nathan Archer, Bachelor of Arts, Christian Ministry. Justin Jorstad, Bachelor of Arts, Christian Studies in absentia. Jenna Cox, Bachelor of Arts, English. Emily Duffield, Bachelor of Arts, English Honors. Victoria Voth, Bachelor of Arts, General Studies. Matthew Reimer, Bachelor of Arts, Humanities. Lindsay Reimer, Bachelor of Arts, Music. Karis Fawcett, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology. Matthew Dirksen, Bachelor of Arts, Theology. Rain Orange, Bachelor of Arts, Youth Ministry. Congratulations. Well, on page nine of your program, you will find the lyrics to the song that we're going to sing together. So I invite you to turn there to page nine and also invite you to stand as you are able. Well, everything that we are celebrating today, uh, the ability to learn, uh, to think, to reason, to write about it in the proper format, um, all of these things, all these abilities, these capacities to love and to grow and to serve, are gifts from our Heavenly Father. And in fact, the very breath in our lungs is a gift from the author of life. So let's respond together to him in song as we worship him together. Let's sing together. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness you give hope you restore every heart that is broken great are you lord it's your breath in our lungs 
Give life. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. You pray. your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only God Sing all the earth. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. All the earth will shout your praise. Gentlemen, you may uh, put on your hats if you haven't already done so. Chairman Weens, it is my pleasure to present 93 college and 38 seminary graduates to receive their certificates, diplomas, degrees as listed in your program. Each student has been approved for graduation by the faculty of both Briarcrest College and seminary. In accordance with our provincial charter, upon the recommendation of the Briarcrest College and Seminary faculty, I confer on each graduand the appropriate credential and welcome them as Briarcrest alumni. 
Now, would those assisting in the ceremony please take their positions to receive the individual college graduates as they are presented. Would all graduates please stand? And the first grads, please make your way to the bottom of the stairs as directed. The following students are the esteemed graduates of the Faculty of Arts and Science. Certificate in Arts and Science, Melissa Virginia Adrian. Kristen Lauren Brewer. Certificate in Biblical Studies, Andrew James Lehman. Adriana Gabrielle Lister. Associate of Arts in Biblical Studies, Joshua James Mitten. Associate of Arts, Humanities, Emmanuel T. Redekop. <laughs> Associate of Arts, Social Sciences, Victoria Kathleen Joel. <laughs> Bachelor of Arts, Biblical Studies, Katerina Chichu. <laughs> Jeremy Robert Holsworth. Brittany Nicole Murray. <laughs> Riley Daniel Trithart. <laughs> Bachelor of Arts, English, Jenna Nicole Cox. <laughs> Alexis Ferguson. Sean Brian Courtpat. <laughs> Bachelor of English Honors, Kaylee Brittany Clark. <laughs> Emily Jane Duffield, with great distinction. Aaron James Peel, with distinction. Bachelor of Arts, General Studies, Riley Charles Graytrix. <laughs> Victoria Rose Voth, with distinction. <laughs> Bachelor of Arts, Humanities, Ryan Stewart Heppel. <laughs> Tracy Ruth Nibida. Joseph David Douglas Holine. Matthew Joel Reimer. Bachelor of Arts Psychology, Jessica Lynn Bailey. Alyssa Bronwyn Taniel Bowgen. Karis Rachel Gray. <laughs> Highest distinction. Caitlin Beth Giddings. <laughs> Ma 
Brianna Mary Miller with distinction. James Christopher Miller. Braden Pauls with distinction. Josie Alexandra Rowlandson. Hannah Joy Smith, with distinction. <laughs> Bachelor of Arts Theology, Matthew Paul Dirksen. The Faculty of Christian Ministry, Associate of Arts, Christian Studies, Heather Louise Indenbosch. Bachelor of Arts, Christian Ministry, Nathan James Archer, highest distinction. Jackson Harvey Clark. Silas David Friesen. Sherry Oberg Storzak. <laughs> Bachelor of Arts, Youth Ministry, Rain Madeline Orange Distinction. From the Faculty Performing Arts and Professional Studies, the Bachelor of Arts, Applied Linguistics, TESOL, Jamie Hitchin. <laughs> Emily Aaliyah Joel. <laughs> Abigail Clausen. <laughs> Rochelle Therese McDonald, with distinction. <laughs> Kenna Ann McCurry. <laughs> Madeline Jane Peters. <laughs> Taylor Ann Reimer, with great distinction. Grace Salam. <laughs> Anita Taves with distinction. <laughs> Riley Autumn Clausen Weeb with highest distinction. Bachelor of Arts, Applied Linguistics, TESOL, After Degree, Heather Lorraine Redant, with great distinction. <laughs> Bachelor of Arts, Business Administration, Micah Lane Abbott. <laughs> Jesse Allen Bojan. Mitchell David Erickson. Jeremy Jonathan Ernst. Thomas Hessian Gray. Nathaniel Vincent Heron with distinction. Adam James McNeil. Yeah. 
Bachelor of Arts, Music, Laura Anderson. Sarah Caitlin Isler. Bailey Sarah Elaine Plett. Lindsay Morgan Reimer. Briarcrest College graduates, would you now please move your tassels from the right side to the left side of your caps? Now, could the seminary graduates please stand and the first grads make their way to the bottom of the stairs? Would those assisting for the seminary please take their positions to receive the individual grads runs? Uh, Master of Christian Ministries. Nicole Roland Nowichen. <laughs> Master of Counseling, Wesley Robert Bashforth. Gregory Blacklock. Yeah. Brianna Lee Matchett. Yeah. Magna Cum Laude. Yeah. Hannah Povey. And now Master of Arts in Leadership and Management, Tara Lee Ray Barker Blankenstein, summa cum laude. <laughs> Christopher Braithwaite. Adam Gary Driscoll. <laughs> Blaine Eagle, summa cum laude. Graham Patrick English, summa cum laude. <laughs> Daniel Goddard, summa cum laude. <laughs> Kevin Grant Jansen, cum laude. <laughs> Carmen Danae Campman, summa cum laude.
<laughs> Judith McCartney, magna cum laude. Gordon Emil Nessimer, summa cum laude. <laughs> Jeremy C. Peters, summa cum laude. Nathan Daryl Risch, summa cum laude. <laughs> Kelly Grant Sixstrom. Josie Rochelle Vance, summa cum laude. <laughs> Kevin John Weens, magna cum laude. Master of Arts, Marriage and Family Therapy, Tracy Joanne Asvido, cum laude. <laughs> Marvin Earl Chichu. Kendra Dawn Higgs, summa cum laude. <laughs> Emily May Provencher. Kendra Michelle Sigelko, summa cum laude. <laughs> Master of Arts, Theological Studies, Nathan Alexander Scott. He's also graduating with a Master of Arts in Biblical, or Biblical Languages and Exegesis, magna cum, magna cum laude. Richard Thomas Wendell. Master of Divinity, Andrew Stewart Gilkinson, magna cum laude. It's my privilege to pray a prayer of dedication. 
for our students. And as I pray for you, our graduating class, followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, servant leaders for today and for tomorrow. And while you hear my voice in this prayer, I want you to know that you have countless family and friends and pastors and teachers and a great cloud of witnesses in heaven that are cheering you on today. We love you. We thank God for you. We pray for you. And in the days to come, we will one day follow you. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, you are our creator, our king, and our shepherd. You invite us to trust. You call us to follow, and you equip us to serve. Today we dedicate this graduating class to your service. Take them, protect them, provide for them, guide them, and use them as agents of change in a world full of despair, disappointment, need, and yet opportunity. A world that needs hope, a world that needs the gospel. And as the Apostle Paul prayed for the Philippian believers centuries ago, we pray with the same aspiration. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all, making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I'm sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment so that you may approve what is excellent. And so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. And so we dedicate this class to you, our Father. And this we pray in the righteous and preeminent name of Jesus Christ who loved us, died for us, and rose again and we all agree in saying, amen. It has been a great afternoon of celebration and praise. We've been challenged, we've been encouraged, and we wanna thank each of you for joining us for this joyous occasion. The recessional, which will begin momentarily, will begin with the faculty leaving the platform and making their way out uh, to the foyer. Uh, graduates, as faculty leave, uh, those who are on the west side of the building uh, will go out through the west doors and circle around to the south side of the chapel, and those who are on this side of the room out through the east doors and meet in the middle of the front of the chapel. Uh, so. Uh, parents, friends, family, etc. that uh, as you locate where your uh, uh, celebrated significant one is, uh, you can chase them accordingly. Uh, it's a great day outside and again we thank you for joining us and now graduates, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you, be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Thank you for sharing this day with us. Praise be to God. <laughs>